but it isn't. With these blackguards, it's always you, 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 you. In other words, these boys are the greatest persons upon earth. By their own tongue, they witness against themselves that they are not of the brethren. They are not one of us. Unless you know yourself to be lost, you'll never care for that Savior who came to seek and to save the lost. That's the second discovery, then, that it's important to be just before God. But then, How? on account of the spirituality of God's moral law, How do you become just? and our consequent inability to keep it perfectly, we are very far from standing in that position. How do you become just before God? Then there comes another discovery, <sighs> namely that, consequently, it is utterly impossible for us to hope that we can be ever just before God. How do you do? On the footing of our own doing. We must give it up now as an utterly lost case. The past is past. That can never be by us blotted out. And the present, in so much as we are weak through the flesh, is not much better than the past. And the future, notwithstanding all our fond hopes of improvement, will probably be none the better. And so, salvation by the works of the law becomes to us a dreary impossibility. The law said, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things written in the book of the law to do them. I was conversing on one occasion with one of our most illustrious Jewish noblemen. Get on with it. When I put to him the question, he believed himself to be perfectly righteous. And I believe if any man could be so by his moral conduct, he might have fairly laid claim to it. But what I said to him, now there is your own law for it. Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things written in the book of the law to do them. Have you continued in all things? He said, I have not. Then I said, the curse is upon you. How do you hope to escape from it? And I found that to be a question for which he, at any rate, had no answer. And it's a question which, when properly understood, no man can answer, except by pointing to the cross of Christ and saying, He was made a curse for us that we might be made a blessing. Unless you and I keep the law of God perfectly, it matters little how near we get to perfection. It is as though God had committed to our trust a perfect crystal base and said, If you keep that whole and present it to me, you shall have a reward. But we've cracked it. We've chipped it. Ah, my brother and the most of us have broken it and smashed it to pieces. But we will suppose we've only cracked it a little. Yes, but even then we've lost the reward. For the condition was that it should be perfectly whole. What's missing? What's missing from this waffle? Never does Charles Haddon Spurgeon admit to original sin. He doesn't say, well, we cracked it in Adam. Adam, the federal head, and the father and federal head of mankind. Doesn't believe it. In his sins, sorry, in his sermon, Little Sins in Surrey Gardens, he denies absolutely, totally original sin. Sin to him, as here, is that which a man commits in his life. And this is a subtlety, because man does commit sin in his life. But Spurgeon says, at some stage in his life, in his youth, he begins to sin. Man is a sinner. Full stop. And he sins because he's a sinner, Mr. Spurgeon. Not that he learns sins to sin, as you said in Surrey Gardens in your seven little sins, and now a subtly repeating it again. A brother and the most of us have broken it and smashed it to pieces. We all have. But we will suppose we've only cracked it a little. See? We yes, but it. even then we've lost the reward, for the condition was that it should be perfectly whole, and the slightest chip is a violation of the condition upon which the reward would have been given. 
Never you say that you will not break it further. Nay, you have broken it. You've thrown yourself now out of the list. It seems hard sometimes when you tell people that if they have violated the law at one point, they've broken the whole law. But it is not so hard as it looks to be. For if I tell a man who's going down a coal mine on a long chain that if he breaks one link of the chain, it doesn't matter, though all the other hundreds or thousands of links may be sound. If there's only one link that's broken, down will descend the basket and the poor miner be dashed to pieces. Now, nobody thinks that to be hard. Everybody recognizes it's being a matter of mechanical law. The strength of a chain must be measured by its weakest part. Waffle, waffle, waffle. So the strength of our obedience must be gauged by the very point on which it fails. And alas, our obedience has failed, and through it, not one of us can ever be just before God. Now I want to stop a minute and put the question around the galleries and below the stairs. Have you all got as far as that? It is important to be just before God. Now we see that we're not so. Do we see that we cannot be so? Are we quite convinced that by our own obedience to the law of God, it is hopeless for us to think of standing accepted before the Most High? I pray the Eternal Spirit to convince you all of this, or you will keep on knocking at the door until you're quite sure that God has nailed it up forever. You know, he started off <clears throat> saying that he wouldn't go into what justification was, but only the consequences. <laughs> now he's going to what justification is. And I don't think for one moment he's going to actually get there as to what justification is, because he's just waffling on. And you'll go scrambling over that alp and <coughs> falling down this precipice until you're convinced that it is impossible for you to climb it. And then you will give up your desperate endeavor and come to God in God's way, which is quite another way from your own. I trust that we're all convinced of this. Let us notice one more preliminary discovery. A man, having found out all this, suddenly discovers that insomuch as he is not just before God and cannot be, he is at the present moment under condemnation. God is never indifferent towards sin. If therefore a man be not in a state in which God can justify him, he is in a state in which God must condemn him. If you're not just before God, you are condemned at this very moment. How would you get just before God? You are executed, it's true, but the condemnation has gone forth against you. And the sign that it is so is your unbelief. For Scripture says, He that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed on the Son of God. How some of you would spring up from your seats tonight if all of a sudden you got the information that you had been condemned by the courts of your country. But when I say that you've been condemned by the court of heaven, this glides across your conscience like drops of water or oil over a marble slab. Yet, my hearers, if thou didst but know the meaning of what I'm saying, and I pray God the Holy Ghost to make thee know it, it would make thy very bones to quiver. God has condemned thee. Thou art out of Christ. Thou hast broken his law. God has lifted his hand to smite thee, and though his mercy tarries for a while, Yet days and hours will soon be gone, and then the condemnation shall take the shape of execution. And where will thy soul be then? Now you must have the sentence of condemnation passed in your own soul, or else you will never be justified. For until we are condemned by ourselves, we are not acquitted by God. What? Ah, oh, just... When the law revived, I died, says Paul. You're going to die first? You're going to sit there, mulling it over, oh, well, 
Oh, this, 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 I must do this. Oh, can't do this, can't do that, I'm a sinner. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, go and put my trust in Christ. Oh. Again, I pause and say, Dost thou feel this, my dear hearer? If thou dost, instead of despairing, be hopeful. If thou hast the sentence of death within thee, be thankful for it. For now shall life be given thee from the hand of God's grace. What? What? Let's go back one. What the heresy this man is in? My dear hearer, if thou dost, instead of despairing, be hopeful. If thou hast the sentence of death within thee, be thankful for it. For now shall life be given thee from the hand of God's grace. But we're all sense of death in us. Well, having occupied perhaps too much time over that, ah, just... we now come to more immediately into the text. To show us the gospel learning which is taught to us by the Spirit of God. Ah, oh, I, I just you, you, this is this is this is awful. This is pathetic. This Prince of Darkness, that's what he is. I mean, he's just he's just missed justification by faith, and he's just waffled on, and it's justification by man. That's all he's picking given. Let's see what else he's got in other sermons.